everybody. Hi, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread, and this is our first table topper video. We are making Kimber Bell's Cuties table toppers, and it's near the end of December 2021, and I have just put together the quilting part and the embroidery part. All I have left to do now is the borders for the January table topper. All of these videos are going to be in two parts. The first part will be about piecing the table topper and that is for my viewers who are embroiderers and not quilters. I'm going to give you lots of tips and tricks on how to get accurate piecing done. And uh, if you don't know how to quilt and you just want to follow along, this is a really great study for you to be able to watch this. Part two of every table topper will be about doing the embroidery of it. And so those of you who are seasoned quilters and you're just new to embroidery, if you've got a machine with an embroidery arm and you have not used it yet, it is time to take it out and uh, get your money's worth out of it, okay? Because you paid a lot of money for that thing. You can join me with this and we're going to do a table topper every month. So there's a couple of different ways this is going to work and it, I'm trying to do this for all of my viewers. So everybody is going to need to get this book. This is Kimber Bell's Table Topper Cuties. There are 12 table toppers in here and everybody's going to need to get, if you want to follow along, you're going to need to get the pattern book. The pattern book does contain each month's applique pieces are in the book. So if you don't have an embroidery machine and you just want to sew along and follow along, you can certainly do that too. If you do have an embroidery machine, you can also get the embroidery CD that goes along with this. The embroidery CD has all the embroidery files. It also has all of the SVG cut files that you'll need for each of the table toppers. If you don't have a cutting machine, that's okay. You can do it the old fashioned way by just laying your fabric right on top of the placement line, stitch the tack down line, and then trim away the outer fabric outside of that tack down line. That's okay too. You don't have to have a cutting machine, but I will be showing how to use the Brother Scan and Cut in order to cut out all of these little pieces. If you have Simply Applique or BES4, you don't have to buy the embroidery CD. And I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So what you will do, but you need a Brother Scan and Cut. Okay, so this is to take care of everybody, you guys. So you would make a copy of this, scan it into the Scan and Cut, and then use either Simply Applique or BES4 to create the embroidery files that you can use and I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So I'm trying to do this for everybody and we're going to do it every month around the 20th, 21st ish of every month. I'll have two new videos out for you guys. One for the quilt piecing to put the topper together and the second one to do the embroidery and the simply applique piece. Okay, so that's it. All right, you guys, let's get started with this and I'm really excited to do it all year long and I hope you join me. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and uh, enjoy yourself. Get that embroidery machine out and take that scan and cut out of the box, all right? Let's get started. All right, I'm getting ready to start January's table topper, and that is this one right here, the blue one. And pretty much these are all constructed the same. It's a combination of quilting and machine embroidery. So right now we're going to work on cutting out all the fabrics and that begins in this book for January on page four. And I'm just going to go through um, and show you the fabrics I chose. This is a white on white. I hope you can see it. I'll get up real close. Sorry for the shadows. So this is white on white. And if you have a white on white snowflake, that'd probably be good too. The background blue for this is going to be this fabric and the background for the snowmen is going to be this fabric and the inner border is going to be this fabric and my uh, outer borders are going to be this fabric and I needed fabrics for the hats 
that you know these are real cute if you want to do these cute little if you want to do like the green and the pink and the red and yellow and all that that probably let me get up close that wouldn't look all that great in my house so I chose patterned black a jot dot black kind of a gray real dark gray and a brown and a gold and I think that these will look real good as hats on this whole set of background fabrics really the hardest part of this whole thing was picking fabrics it takes me forever to do that and then my snowman this is a fleece it's a real thin fleece I had it in my stash from a baby project uh, long ago so I will not be cutting out my snowmen using the scan and cut I will use the scan and cut for the hat the hat the four hats and the nose all four noses but I am going to do my applique the old-fashioned way and trim the fleece around the tack down line um, I just don't want all that fuzz on my mats so that's there's a reason behind that there but okay I'm just gonna go ahead and get cutting the way these are put together is you're gonna make the nine patch and then we're gonna add the borders to it and then we're gonna add each uh, side we're going to add a triangle to each side they're all put together pretty much the same way but I just want to tell you how that is and then each snowman will get embroidered onto those outer triangles and they all have their noses going a different way now we're going to make the snowball blocks and what that means is we're going to round the corners on these and if you've got white on white like I do I kind of have to double check mine the idea is is to take these 20s and we're going to sew them on it's called the sew and flip method if you've ever heard Pat Sloan talk about that and where you it's where you put your fabric exactly on the corner and then you sew on the diagonal and then fold and then fold this over the problem and then we'll trim off the bottom the problem you run into with that is that um, I've talked about this before it's a term in the garment sewing world called turn of cloth and the problem is that your your fabric is actually going to be smaller on one side than the other the part that folds over needs to be larger than the part that it folds on to. So the way to have it so that it works out every time is you want to, it, I like to do it ahead of time to all of these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little ruler. I'm gonna put my ruler exactly corner to corner. So if the ruler is exactly corner to corner and then I make the line, the line is not corner to corner. So technically, this side is larger now than this side because the ruler was corner to corner. So I'm going to make a little mark on the short side. And I'm going to do that to all of my pieces. But I'm going to do just this one now and show you how. I'm going to do this one snowball show you how this works. Because if you sew it exactly corner to corner, it's not going to come out. You're going to be short and it'll make you crazy. So if you, and it's really like a needle width difference. But if I mark the short side, that's the side that's out from underneath this ruler. All right. This is iron off friction marker. So I'm going to show you how this works. So now you want to put the short side with the little mark into the corner. Okay. And now you want to sew on the line not corner to corner but on the line which is actually right next to the corner so now look and you want them right sides together so now because it's not exactly corner to corner when I fold this over 
it folds and matches perfectly. See that? So when you look at it from the back, it's, it's not short from the front, it's not hanging over from the back, it's perfect. And if you do this method, you will save yourself so much agony. So you want to take the short corner, the short piece to the corner, not the long piece. If you do it the long way, you'll be short and that won't work and you'll have to rip it out. And just sew on the line. A lot of people struggle with this, and this is a basic quilting block uh, technique you will use over and over, that sew and flip method. Once you get good, you don't need to draw the lines anymore because you know when you go to sew it, I'm going to start my needle just this side of that point, and I'm going to land just this side of that point. But when you first start doing it, you want to do it on the drawn line. If I'm not drawing the line, what I'm going to do, like I said, I'm going to start it, my, just, my needle just to the side of the point. I'm using my diagonal seam tape and I've got the point just to the right of the red line on center and I keep it there and aim for that. So I will do these in an assembly line fashion and it makes quick work of getting these taken care of. All right, now I'm ready to trim the blocks and make them snowballed. I need a good pair of shears. I love these. These are gingers. Oh, they're fabulous. Heavy. Love it. So now because this the stitch line is just inside that corner, when I fold it over, it fits perfectly. You get up here so you can see it. See it fits just perfectly. You fold it. And then you cut. Look at how nice these are. It didn't push the fabric. Let me get down there. It didn't push the shove the fabric away. Fold these over so that my points meet. I do a little finger crease. And cut off the bottom two pieces, quarter inch seam lots. Now the block is snowballed. See? That's the idea. Okay, now I'm going to go press these flat. Because these are sewn on the bias, it's really easy for them to get kind of wonky, especially if you didn't finger crease it exactly like you should have. So when I press these, I don't just plop it on there because you're you don't get a good result. What I try to do is at least get it straight so that I know across the top and along the side the point is straight and that triangle fits like it's supposed to so that I get a nice 90 degree angle there. And I'll do one at a time and get them straight. And then it just takes this extra second but they'll, you'll notice if you haven't done these before, they will want to kind of go wonky on you. And this is just an easy way to make sure everybody knows what it's supposed to be doing. And then I give it a shot of this fabric spray. This is that new Magic Quilting and Crafting Spray. Oh gosh, I love it. Yeah, that's great. See, now that's a nice square. It's hot, so I'm going to lift it like that. <laughs> so I'll just continue to do that on all of these. Okay, so now we need to make our nine patch. 
And according to the pattern, let's see, we have two snowballs on the top and one in the middle and two on the bottom. So, I will get all this going. When I do a nine patch, you want your seams to go opposite when you nest them. And so it doesn't matter which way you do it, you just need to make sure that they're opposite. So when I stitch a snowball on top of the plain block, there, the fabric you can see here, it, it wants to go toward the plain block. So whatever's on the bottom, that's the way the seam wants to go. So if these want to go to the inside, then the middle blocks need to go to the outside. So I will have that seam. I'll have the plain block on the top when I stitch those. There's one row. This will be the bottom row or the top, case may be, either one. And now I'm going to stitch the center row with the plain block on top. So my nine, my three rows are put together, and I'm just, I'm just finger creasing right now. And then this one, see how it wants to go and put those seam allowances to the outside. Okay, so I'm going to nest them now. And the way you nest is you put one seam allowance going one direction. You start in the middle always. You don't want to start on the end. Start in the middle and one seam allowance goes one direction and one goes the other. And you want to put those right up next to each other and keep the edges together. And then the way I pin, you can pin however you want, how I pin is I take a quilting pin and I go in one side of the seam allowance from the bottom first, from the direction I'm going to sew toward, and then out the other side of the seam allowance at the top. That gives me room to get my needle just over the nested seam line before I pull the pin. It just seems to work pretty well like that. Butt those right up together and go in one side of the seam allowance, out the other. And then I will pin together the bottom corners because they get wonky. They like to dance around go wherever. And then these, I'm just going to hold together like that. And don't worry that you got bubbles. That will all settle out under the needle. Take a couple of stitches. And then I'm going to take it down here, thumb under, fingers on top, the way I've sewn all the time. And like this is exactly what I was talking about. I'm getting my needle is coming up to the nested seam and it's going to go just over it by one maybe two stitches and I've got that room now I can pull that need that pin make sure those are even all right I'm coming up on the next seam just go over it by a stitch And if we did it right, our nests will be perfect like that. See that? That's how you get perfectly nested seams, is just like that. So let's do it again, okay? You want your seam allowances going opposite directions. Start in the middle, butt them up against one another. Take a pin, go in one side of that seam allowance, out the other on, on the bottom part of the seam allowance, not from the top to the bottom, but from the bottom to the top. And by what I mean by that is I'm going to be sewing right here, so this is the bottom of the seam allowance. 
in one side, out the other. Put those corners together so they don't dance around. And match these up and we're ready to go. Get it right. They should be perfect. This is exactly how you nest seams. That turned out just adorable. I'm going to go press it flat. Okay, now we're going to sew the inner borders on. So you want the 11 inch strips, one and a half by 11, and sew them on opposite ends. And if they're a little bit long, that's okay. Just want to keep them together. You can pin if you want. I'm not going to because I um, use my fingers kind of as fabric guides. But I do check frequently and make sure that my strip is still on the edge of the block. Okay. That looks good. I'm going to go press these open and trim them up. All right, it's time for the next two strips on the other ends. This one looks like it's going to fit exactly. So, since that's the case, I'm going to use a pin here, and I'm going to put a pin down here. If you're skimping on room, then just put your pins on the ends, find center, put a pin there, and then put a pin between those two centers. Hi, Boo Boo. Hello, baby girl. Okay, you want to go iron these flat. Okay, now we need to add the triangles on. Whatever side you put first, that's the shorter side of the border, the one that is under, that's the triangle side you want to put on first. So we're going to do this side, this side, and then the top and bottom. And the easiest way to do this is to fold your project in half and take a teeny, 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 tiny little V-snip, not into the seam allowance, teeny, tiny little V-snip, or you'll get a hole. You don't want that. And then this, fold this on the long side. Do not stretch this thing. And put that on, that V-snip, right in the middle. Oop, right sides together, Goofy. That's dangerous doing it that way, you guys. If you're not comfortable with that, use a marker, okay? Fold it in half and use a marker, put a pin, whatever, okay? But your little corners are going to stick out past the edge. So if that gave you heart palpitations, fold it in half, take a pin and put a pin at the center mark. Just like, see, that's hard because you get that funny little fold. Okay. And take yourself another triangle. Fold it wrong sides together. Put your triangle at that pin, the halfway point, and then fold it right sides together. You guys, I'm sorry. I have old garment sewing habits. <laughs> uh, and we make notches in our fabric. Of course, you have a 5 8 inch seam allowance. There's a big difference. <laughs>
All right, I'm gonna go iron these two back. All right, same thing. Center is a little bit more important here because you've got longer ends. Seriously, y'all, that's, that's how tiny that is. Can you see that? Can you see that V? That's how teeny tiny I do that. Little bitty, so it's not in the seam allowance. But it's a permanent, I can move it around and my pin's not gonna fall out or anything like that. That's just old habits. Start stitching back here on this other triangle. You guys notice I pin when I'm sewing on the bias. I don't pin when I'm sewing on straight. <laughs> Those borders, I didn't use pins. Because I had to. Perfect. Okay. That looks good. You want to make sure you've got at least a quarter inch seam allowance right there. That's really important to make sure where those crossed you have at least a quarter inch seam allowance. Both ends. If it's short, take it off and do it again. Otherwise your block will be way wonky. Okay now to square up your block. Look at this coming out pretty. I love this. This mode of fabric is so nice. It's, um, it's called Chill by uh, Zen Chic from Moda. Very nice. So I trimmed exactly a quarter inch seam allowance on each side and I got like 18 and an eighth. I'm fine with that. I'm just going to leave that. Um, this is not a show quilt. I'm not going to get all wound up about the fact that I've got an eighth of an inch difference. Um, I really want that quarter inch seam allowance more than anything. And so I'm making sure my ruler lines are level here. They are straight here. And then I've got a quarter of an inch here. And do the other side. So it's tough to square these up if you don't have an 18 inch square ruler. But what you can do is go from side to side, right at the point, right here, side to side. And again, I'm 18 and an eighth, so it's square. I'm good with this, it's fine. Okay, so here is the piece topper. I've already done the embroidery on it. You guys need to take a look at part two and do the embroidery along with me, all right?